Welcome back to our study of photosynthesis. In this video, we're going to talk about the basic mechanics of the photosynthetic reaction center in Photosystem 2. Now, I had mentioned in previous videos that photosynthesis, at least the light-dependent reactions, are named somewhat strangely. Photosystem 2 comes before Photosystem 1 in the process. The reason that Photosystem 2 is named such, even though it comes first, is because Photosystem 1 was the first one that was discovered, and no one bothered to correct the naming system since it was already convention at that point. It turns out that the main initiation of all the reactions in Photosystem 2 is in what's called the P680 reaction center. The P680 gets its name from the fact that it absorbs light of 680 nanometers. Okay, And one of the key things here, as shown in the picture over to the left, is that it does absorb light. Okay, Now, we're going to go into some more slides with some more detail on this, but this is just the basic background of the P680 reaction center. All right. The P680 reaction center has what's in it called a special pair of chlorophyll molecules. The special pair of chlorophyll molecules are two chlorophyll molecules that are very, very close to one another, within angstroms of each other. And it turns out that th that special pair of chlorophyll molecules plays a huge role in initiating the photosynthetic electron transport chain. That special pair of chlorophyll, or I'm just from now on going to refer to it as the special pair, the special pair is able to donate electrons. But it's only able to donate electrons once it receives sufficient energy, ultimately from UV light from the sun. All right? When the P680 special pair receives sufficient and enough energy from UV photons, it's able to donate an electron to an electron acceptor. That electron acceptor specifically is pheophyton, but we're not going to concern ourselves with that now. Now, when the special pair donates an electron, it's essentially acting as a reducing agent, right? It's reducing an electron acceptor. So the P680 special pair gives up an electron. Therefore, P680 has what we refer to as an electron hole. Now, I don't know that I like this terminology very well, but it, it's what a lot of textbooks use. All an electron hole is is an oxidized form of a molecule. Okay, So if a molecule gives an electron up, its charge goes up by one. It becomes more positive. That's what we mean by an electron hole. And since it gave up an electron to something else, that electron acceptor now has a charge that goes down by one. All right. In other words, P680 went up by one in charge, and the acceptor went down in one by charge. This is what we're going to refer to as separation of charge, and we'll look at this in more detail in another slide. Okay, But suffice it to say, the P680 now has a positive charge, or at least it's one more positive than it was. It has an electron hole. It turns out that that electron hole, which, in other words, it's devoid of an electron, it gets that electron back by siphoning electrons from water. Okay, Remember that water is a substrate of photosynthesis. Remember, photosynthesis produces oxygen. So the question is, why do plants need water to live, besides creating turgor pressure in the stem and allowing it to have structure? Water is used to feed electrons back to P680, the electrons it gave up. It has to get electrons back, otherwise it's going to stall and the plant will die. So it has to get electrons from water. So in other words, the P680 reaction center, in tandem with another enzyme that we're going to look at in a few slides, ultimately catalyzes the conversion of water to oxygen, the oxygen that we breathe in the atmosphere. And when it does that, it takes those electrons to replace the electron hole from the electron that was donated by the special pair of P680. Now here's a question for you. What is the free energy change, in other words, the delta G, for the oxidation of water to oxygen? Positive or negative? I don't care about a magnitude. It's very, very positive, okay? The standard free energy change for this reaction is extremely positive, okay? And that, in other words, means that it's very thermodynamically unfavorable. So how are plants able to accomplish this? Well, it turns out that when P680 is oxidized, in other words, we designate that as P680+. This is P680 oxidized. The, 
the plus charge indicates the electron hole. Remember that it's going to accept electrons from water ultimately. Well, the only reason that this conversion of water to oxygen with such a positive delta G is able to occur is oxidized P680 is without a doubt the strongest biological oxidizing agent known. It's fairly easy for this enzyme to take the electrons away from water. If P680 was not a strong oxidizing agent like it is here, this wouldn't occur. In fact, it has an estimated redox potential of approximately 1.3 volts. This is the only thing that makes it possible to oxidize water into molecular oxygen. Now, what we have in photosystem 2, which is shown on the left, is unidirectional electron flow. Now, P680 is shown right here. And from on the bottom is low energy, relatively, and on the top is higher relative energy. When light energy strikes, ultimately, but indirectly, the P680 reaction center, an electron in the special pair of chlorophyll goes up in energy. And when it goes up in energy, here's P680 in the excited state, or in particular that electron is in the excited state, it turns out that electron is able to be transferred to an electron acceptor known as pheophyton. Okay? And, I ha and in this list right here, it's unidirectional, electrons are going to flow from carrier to carrier to carrier, ultimately until we get to a complex referred to as the cytochrome B6F complex. When P680 is in the excited state up here in higher energy, or in other words, its electron is, the electron will be transferred to a nearby electron acceptor known as pheophyton. And it's really not so much important to know what the exact electron acceptors and donors are, but what you should understand is that the electron is transferred unidirectionally, in this case from pheophyton to plastoquinone A to plastoquinone B, and then ultimately to this proton pumping complex right here referred to as cytochrome B6F. Okay? It turns out this complex right here is going to be very important because this is one way that the chloroplast is going to generate ATP. And it turns out that ATP will, use, will be used in the Calvin cycle, which is part of the, the light-independent reactions. All right? But there are several things that are really important to understand. Electrons are transferred unidirectionally to this proton pump right here. Okay? Now what you see over here is the water splitting complex. Another name for this enzyme is the oxygen evolving complex. The reason that it's called both is because number one it splits water by siphoning off water's electrons, but it also evolves oxygen. Oxygen sort of bubbles off you could sort of think. But remember when this P680 transfers its electrons to pheophyton, it now has that electron hole, and it turns out that the water splitting complex, or oxygen evolving complex, takes the electrons one at a time from water and feeds them to P680 in order to replenish those electrons. Okay? And we'll later go into more of photosystem one. It turns out that also there's a reaction center here called P700 that functions very similarly to P680.